the first test flight, we had some extremely good pictures of that descent because the weather was so clear. We haven't got those pictures yet, but we hope to have them any minute. Our viewers, Dick, join the descent with the difficult bit over. I believe they have. They're coming into the terminal area phase now, which is about 82,000 feet, Mach 2.5, and they're very shortly to land in about eight minutes. And they're on the glide slip. They're, everything's going fine. They came out 25 miles south of there it is. They're back on it, and there we have it in sight. Visual acquisition on TV. Out of 100,000 feet, Mark 3.6. You have positive seats. The little tiny dot in the center, in case your TV set isn't uh, isn't immaculate. The positive seat positive call seat. means that they can use the seats in case they have a problem. They, they can, can eject to save themselves yes. if they need to. It doesn't look like that. Doesn't look like it. Seats, Columbia now. Uh, four, four times the speed of sound. Twice the speed of Concorde. <laughs> That's about right. And about twice as high as uh, Concorde can go. 90,000 feet and a range of 74 miles. There's one of the chase planes Mark that we'll be picking nine. it up soon. We fired their uh, deorbit burn just about, just under an hour ago at 137 miles high. Here they are on the glide slope. Houston, Columbia Air Data looks good on board. All Roger, nav data is ex excellent. All data is good. Their energy management is good. So it, uh, it should look just like the last one. Now, who's flying it now, Dick? Uh, Joe Engel's flying this at the present time. Columbia, Houston, you can take the air data. Welcome. The air data is good. He's going in and out of control six here, which is manual. In and out of auto to manual to do a bunch of tests. And he will fly around the approach circle manually and then go to automatic control for the first portion of the approach and landing phase. Now we watch this, uh, uh, watch this sensation. Approach. Roger. Let's just remind our viewers, Dick, that uh, there were a historic series of maneuvers with the pilot actually with his right hands on the, on the stick there, on this descent. And we have a wind update for you and a weather update. Uh, you've got a very thin layer at 25,000. The winds Airborne are as brief and on the ground, 220, 18 knots, gusting to 24. Altimeter is 30, decimal 07. You got 60 miles viz underneath. Over. Hey, good. Sounds like a good old ready day. <laughs> yes, sir. Looks like a few thin clouds there to come around, but uh, they've got all the data that they need. And there's probably no more. No more experienced pilot than Dick. No, I think uh, Joe and Dick had flown the approach and landing phase test, and now they're doing it again, the same thing. As a test pilot, Joe had about 30 tests to make during re-entry. Joe Engel continuing to fly the test maneuvers. And he flew that rocket plane X-15, some That's 16 times. So he's, he's well versed at this phase of the flight. What is astronaut's wings? 15, 16 years ago. Houston, that's your convenience. Transfer the state vector from the past to the BFS. They're almost done please. Roger, a state vector transfer, past to BFS. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you very much. The state vector is nothing more than navigational information. Looks like we've got a few chase planes out there. Joe got his astronaut's wings in the X-15 by going more than 50 miles high. Yes, he did. 1964. Roger, you're right down the line. So he's on ground track. Well, you're approaching the heading alignment circle now. That's called a, what is it, a 100,000 ton glider? 100,000 feet. 100,000 100 ton glider? 22 miles. 200,000 pounds of glider. Columbia Houston, we show you intercepting the hack. And a reminder, you've got the strong winds out of the west. Now out of the That's the heading alignment circle around the approach end of the runway. You'll see him in a constant okay, left-hand okay. turn. And as he comes out of this turn, he'll be lined and up and directly with the runway. It's the same runway as the first test right. landed on. Yes, it is. Runway 23 at Edwards Air Force Base in California. They were going to try a crosswind landing, but the uh, crosswind was just a little too strong for them. They decided to go back in a 2-3. turn now to get lined up with the runway. There's moisture in the sky out there. Picture. He's pulling 
Houston, uh, 25,000 feet. I'm in Houston about 3,000 feet low now, out of 24,000 feet. Roger that. Hand face, we're showing 290 at uh, 20,000. 290 knots. Okay, we're about to be with you at 19. Check, body flap to manual. Roger that, body flap to manual. We're going to have a chase plane joining up with him pretty quick. 280 knots at 18,000 feet. I'll be down in about two minutes now, Dick. And has Joe Engel got it under his own control now? He might be in automatic landing phase right now. He will, okay, speed brake sweep start now. He will take but over. Still just slightly low on the energy, looking okay. At about 2,000 feet, just before he flares, they're doing a speed brake test now for more aerodynamic data. They're a short distance from touchdown. He's still getting... Test pilot information. Nine miles chase plane looking at his uh, heat shield underneath those famous tiles. Been no reports of any failure there at all. We haven't heard a word of tile problems right, at all. Slightly below glide slope. You're below the glide slope. You have a go for auto land. Okay, Rick. Thank you, sir. This is a microwave terminal phase guidance okay, he's into right, right now. now. It's an automatic. Now, would it land if he right took here. his hands off? No, it cut take it down to the flare, but Joe has to land it from that point. Just over a minute to touchdown, Larry. Nine thousand two thirty. Coming down in about a twenty degree glide Next slope. Speed brake auto. Okay. Speed brake, body flap, auto, everything's auto. Thank you. Speed brake to auto helps him control airspeed, about two hundred and sixty five knots. And as we said before, for Joe Engel, this is very nearly routine after all his work in the simulator and on the, the prototype. He flew Enterprise a little bit like this. Now he's just doing it with the second one called Columbia. About a minute away from touchdown. Now what's the betting that they'll actually put it on the black marks on the run runway where Crippen and Young failed? I imagine there are some bets on this one. <laughs> <laughs> we know a little bit more about the aerodynamics, so he has a better chance. Chase plane, of course, counts them down the last he, few feet. He calls the last uh, 10 feet of altitude and verifies his airspeed. So he's going to know what he's doing. And yeah, he can run into the ground, too. <laughs> 3,500 feet. 250 knots. Okay, 2,500 feet. Speed brakes are closed. We're 270 knots. He's right on. Chase concursion. He will start to flare at about 17 hours. In good shape. By flare, you mean what? Just rotate. The gear's coming down. He will rotate to break the rate of descent. That starts to flare, and if he's already done that, the gear's down. 50, 30, 20, 10, 5. A little dust three, on the runway. Touchdown. Nose gear 15. He didn't bounce that. He has improved a little bit. Good as a Navy pilot, yeah. Dick? Well, Five, that's hard to say. Three. Touchdown. Welcome home. Look at that. That Thank is you, sight. And the whole point about it is that we've now seen it twice. We've seen it before. Time and that time that is truly is a reusable vehicle. Thirteen minutes, ten seconds. Repeat that uh, mission elapsed time or touchdown. Two days, six hours, thirteen minutes, ten seconds. Okay, Joe, it's a great day for the Ace Moving Company. Welcome home. Over to Steve Nagel now. Okay. 